Okay, welcome back everyone and welcome back to another episode of Corvette Ed's Garage. Well, today we're coming at you from the comforts of my office. Reason being is it's going to be 111 degrees out there today. I don't want no part of that shit. Anyway, in today's episode we are going to start up the Corvette for the first time since we installed the supercharger. Now there's no boost that we'll be applying to the uh, car, so we're going to be very conservative here. We just want to make sure that everything's running okay check for any type of leaks, uh, make any type of adjustments that we need to make. So, with that being said, let's do it. Not so much. All right, fire in the hole. Fire that hole. Toss down. Houston, we have a problem. That didn't go off very good. At this point, I'm thinking, nah, it's an easy fix. How far from the true that was. Let's move on. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to set the base timing. Initially, we'll set the timing with the car off, but we always want to come back and follow up on that with the car on. But if the vet's not idling, it doesn't matter what you do. Uh, so let's just push on and see what happens. It's about 45 now almost. So while all this is going on, I mean, we're checking for everything. We're checking for any type of leaks, any intake leaks, any vacuum leaks. I mean, hell, we're even checking the air in the goddamn tires and we're still coming up empty. Let's move on. Alright, I'm firing the hole. Alright. So we're getting kind of close. The idle is somewhat cooperating, but it's still choking. So we're just going to have to push on. Fire the hole. Fire that hole. It's all good. Like a few pressures. So by this point, I'm ready to destroy this Corvette. We've covered all the bases, we checked for leaks, we checked for vacuum leaks. We're still coming up empty handed and we're running out of steam. It seems like we've been here for hours because we have been. We need to figure out what's going on. But as you'll see in the next clip, I kind of touched on it, but sometimes I just don't hear me. But with so many different things going on here, because it wasn't just what I'm about to reveal, there was other things going on. Let's move on. What's connected here, Ed? Where? I mean, there's a sensor off the block, I'm guessing for temperature or something, and then some other... Uh, that was the original uh, sensor for the uh, auxiliary fan. Oh, okay, okay. There's gotta be something going on with that FMU. Madam, I need you to remain calm, and trust me, I'm a professional. I'm just gonna get that. We're so driven. Huh? Or something Where? So to add in insult into injury, we find our first leak. We knew it was going to happen. It was just a matter of time. Oh, yeah. Come around the oil filter. Oh, yeah, it was dripping down the side of it over here on this side. But I don't feel anything above it, like the seal above. I don't know if there's something over there. So the oil leak ended up being the uh, oil cooler housing. And it's a simple fix, it's just replacing the seal, but unfortunately, I have a sandwich for the adapter to remove as, long, as well as the uh, oil filter. Well, we'll deal with that later, let's push on. Start it back up on your pick. I'm hearing a leak in here. Huh? I'm hearing a vacuum leak in here. Are you really? Yeah. Oh, well, great. Now he got a uh, vacuum leak issue. Let's move on. A vacuum leak, huh? Yeah, it's an air leak. Oh. I'm supposed to do that. I just, I'm hearing a leak of air after you shut it off. 
Well, the vacuum leak ended up being part of the emission, which could and will cause an idle issue. But that's not the only issue going on here. So uh, we're just tackling one problem at a time. Let's move on. Fire the hole. Fire that hole. So now it's time to get serious and do the process of elimination and just start checking everything one by one, shutting it down, and um, hopefully we'll get some type of response and gives us gives us a clue that uh, it's the problem. Let's push on. There we go. So we won't be here now. All right, fire in the hole. Nice. Oh, look at that. And it hasn't done that yet. Something's wrong with that other fuel pump. Yeah, but it's still not idling correctly, so. No, but something in that pump's causing it to yeah. drop pressure at the rail. Yeah, it might not be a good ground. Finally, a freaking clue. Well, I pulled the fuse out of the external fuel pump. The car started reacting differently. It was actually reacting better than it has been through the whole episode that we've been going through here but I'm thinking that I might have a ground issue on the pump which I can take care of that later but I'm still not convinced it's the pump let's move on now if any of you sons of bitch got anything else to say now the fucking time uh, that's gonna be a bitch a TPS? Huh? The throttle sensor? Uh, that's a sensor. Okay. Uh, what's wrong with it? It's unplugged. Oh. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, that fuel line and everything that came. Oof. So what's going on here is uh, we have a sensor disconnected. This is why it's not idling such great but we could have several problems going on here uh, once I disconnected the external fuel pump everything seems to uh, got better as far as fuel pressure it's actually holding the pressure not going backwards so I don't know if this is going to be the major factor here that's uh, uh, fucking things up but uh, one problem at a time one problem at a time now what's the IAC valve well the IAC valve is a idle air control and basically what that does, it controls the engine's idle speed. Well, if it's not connected, it's not controlling shit, right? Anyway, uh, unfortunately I had to take a lot of the emissions uh, equipment off in order to get this fixed. Let's move on. Fire, the hole. Fire that hole. We're, we're pretty much tired today. We're getting ready to wrap it up. There's not really not much we can do today anyway. But before we did, we did run into another leak. Let's push on. Is the reservoir leaking? Yeah, it's, it's gotten worse, I guess. Is it plastic or? That's plastic. Okay. It probably would work if I would tighten that fucker down. Huh? Uh, that's a good place to start. Oh, fucking broke. Oh, really? Oh, great. A crack reservoir. <laughs> Just my luck. That was the other leak. Well, unfortunately, it's an older car, so trying to find a new OEM reservoir tank is not going to happen. I definitely do not want to buy use. Just to end up with the same problem. So, we're going to have to go aftermarket, and we're going to have to pick something that's never going to leak. So let's go ahead and push on to the next day. I'm, uh, I'm flying solo this time. So it's now the next day, and I pretty much took care of 
the IAC issue going on over here. Next issue I seem to be having is the external fuel pump. I'm not sure why uh, it's giving me some issues. I got a feeling that it, um, I need to uh, reground it. It's either that or we're, we're pushing too much fuel because it wouldn't idle. We pull the fuse off of the uh, external fuel pump and she's running, she's running. So let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like. Damn it, Jim! Damn! Finally, finally, finally! She's running on her own idol. This is uh, a huge accomplishment. And I'll tell you right, something right now. It might not look like it in the video, but inside, I am jumping for joy. But wait, we, we still we still got issues. I mean, we had to pull the fuel pump fuse, and so right now it's running on the internal fuel pump. We still got issues. But it's just wonderful just to get up to this point. Wow! Wow, what a journey this has been so far. All right, let's go, let's go ahead and push on. Now here I'm setting the base fuel pressure by adjusting the fuel regulator. Now that the vent's able to uh, idle on its own, I can get that base fuel pressure reading that I've been looking for. Now I mentioned it before, stock configuration, well, that's 36 to 39. However, on the performance end, this vet always liked to be in the, between 40 and 42, so that's what we're going to be shooting for. I'd rather go a little bit high uh, or a little bit rich with the supercharger. Let's push on. Holding the pressure. Ah, uh, there you go, man. It sounds pretty good. There's still some uh, issues going on, but for the most part, it's alive. And alive she is. Doesn't she sound healthy? Oh, man. I'm happy to get to this point. But we still got one more issue we got to deal with and figure out what's going on with the FMU and the external fuel pump. They're not in sync. So we made a few phone calls and I got the answer that I needed. So let's go ahead and push on and just finish this puppy up. Well, it looks like it's running pretty good, doesn't it? Uh, I've readjusted the fuel pressure regulator and that seemed to help, uh, but I did get Pro Charger a call. The symptoms that I told them, it sounds like the fitting here on the uh, FMU might be too tight, which if it's too tight, it's hitting against the uh, diaphragm. If there's any pressure on that uh, diaphragm, then uh, it's gonna cause a uh, rich condition. It makes sense disconnecting the external fuel pump. Anyway, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna crank this counterclockwise and see if that could be the problem. So now we're gonna reinstall the fuse on the um, uh, external fuel pump. The fuse is back in the external fuel pump. Let's see what happens. Well, so far so good. The external fuel pump is activated. The FMU is cooperating. Uh, they're almost in sync, but that, that'll be uh, later on down the road in the fine tuning. Uh, but for now, uh, it's going to do a little surging, but once it uh, levels out, uh, she purrs like a kitten. God damn, I think that did it. She's idling, man. She's idling. I might have did it guys. It's leveled out. Now it feels like it's running like it used to. That's it. So apparently that uh, fixed the problem. I didn't mess with this uh, FMU at all. I didn't put it together. It came to me uh, straight from Pro Charter like that. So, I mean mistakes happen. 
uh, the tech was uh, able to identify the problem and uh, advised me what to do to take care of it. Now that everything is running normal, I got idle, it stabilizes, the com seems like the computer is starting to learn uh, the, uh, the idling on it again. Uh, we're pretty much done with that this part of it. So the FMU issue is now taken care of. So I, what I need to do now is take care of my power steering leak, I did receive gaskets for the oil cooler housing because I'm leaking there. I think we're pretty much uh, got this wrapped up. Other than that, uh, I will be ordering the gauges. We're going to be doing the tuning process on the supercharger and actually start experiencing some boost. Until then, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, whatever, all the above. And we'll catch you on another episode of Corvette Ed's Garage.